Hello and welcome to the Wine and Wisdom Show. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you're here for the first time, welcome. It is so wonderful and I feel oh, filled up the fact that you would like to be here on a Wednesday night with us. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are returning, I gosh, I love it when I see familiar faces and comments. So please make sure you do that tonight. Uh, as you know, my name's Heidi Denning, and um, I am the host and producer of the Wine and Wisdom Show. And let me tell you what it's all about, because you might think it's about wine and wisdom, which of course it is, <laughs> but it is what it is really about is connection. Firstly, for me to be able to connect with you in your lounge rooms or wherever you are with a little bit of, you know, plonk in your glass. <laughs> Cheers. And secondly, it is about me being able to bring to you some of the most courageous and resilient self-leaders that I know are changing our world in their little ways and their big ways day after day after day. And I feel so lucky that I have been surrounded by so many amazing people. And this is my opportunity to bring them to you because I think one thing that 2020 has taught us, it's taught us many things, and we're going to talk about them tonight, actually. But the one thing I know that it has taught us is when you can connect with amazing humans who bring a smile to your face, some warmth to your heart and some wisdom to your brain. Oh my gosh, that's all we really need. Uh, so this gives me a lovely segue into introducing our incredible guest for tonight. Uh, if you have read anything about her, you will know that she is one of those amazing, courageous, resilient self-leaders who are changing the world every single day by what she is doing. Now, she connects amazing people in her local community with incredible events around creativity and self-expression and self-care and self-leadership. But she also connects with this global community uh, with her online presence. And I tell you what, if there's one thing, there will be a few things that you will want to do tonight, but if there's one thing you'll want to do, it is to get on her email list because Helen has this, oh, yes, Helen Wilkes is who we're bringing on in a minute. But Helen, actually, she has this absolutely beautiful way of seeing the world and helping you, not just her way, but helping you see the world with a totally different lens. And I know we all get overwhelmed by all those newsletters that we get into our inbox. And I certainly do. It's delete, 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 delete. And I've got a, you know, an, an AI thing that tells me which ones I perhaps should read and which ones I shouldn't. But I tell you right now, Helen's e-news e is one I pretty much read from top to bottom every single time it comes into my inbox because her wisdom and her beautiful way of seeing the world and it's just remarkable. And that is why I wanted her on this show. So let me introduce you to the incredible Helen Wilkes. I'm going to bring her on now and you get to see her smiley, smiley face. Hello, Helen. Oh, my God, I'm fabulous. Talk you about me some more. <laughs> you are <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> You definitely are. Dig in that intro. <laughs> Would you like me to do that for you always? I mean, please, please, record <laughs> it, send it to me. <laughs> now, I've got one question before anything else, Helen. Uh, do you have a little bit of something of your favourite in a glass? This is a wine. I'm drinking, and I'm drinking red wine in a champagne glass. That is oh. how invested I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Cheers. Cheers to you. And cheers to everybody who is watching. We would love to know, are you drinking red wine in a champagne glass? Because it doesn't yeah. matter. 
We're going to talk about creativity and self-expression because you should be able to do it any way you want, right? That's right. <laughs> so please let us know in the comments, what are you drinking? Are you drinking white? Are you drinking red? <laughs> a little bit of bubbles, a little bit of bourbon? I don't know, but whatever it is, let us know. We want to know, don't we, Helen? Yes, we do. <laughs> and cheers to you, Tiffany. Uh, what are we uh, Sushma, nice to see you, RJ. You're looking beautiful too with your baby bump, let me say. <laughs> even though I can't see it right now. So, Helen Wilkes, mm. I've given you a little bit of my intro. What I would really love for you to do is to introduce yourself and share with everybody who is either watching now or who will be watching later, which we know happens a lot with Facebook Lives. Mm. Um, I want you to share with the world the positivity that you are sprinkling day in and day out. Yeah, so thanks so much for having me. It's a My privilege pleasure. to be here with you, someone that I love and admire so much. So thank you and acknowledging the wonderful work that you do, um, not just with this, but every single day. So oh, thank you. you. Um, so what am I? I'm so many things, but I guess uh, for reference today to keep it, you know, shorter, um, I am a yoga teacher. I am, um, I guess at my essence right now, someone who builds communities. Um, I am a mentor, I'm a speaker and I'm someone that is just entirely obsessed it's like it's in my dna what i was you know sent to earth to do i think um just obsessed with breaking norms and just creating new ways of doing things and not because i'm like trying to be cool or trying to do things differently um but just because i see things a little bit differently apparently um so that's that's kind of who i am right now and what i'm doing yeah. In terms of what my work is influencing, um, so I guess I have a studio at Maroubra Beach in Sydney and it is a yoga space, it's an event space and it's somewhere where hopefully transformation can happen. And um, one of the biggest intentions with this space or a couple of the biggest intentions with this space that four years in is, um, you know, we have these intentions when we create things, but you never actually know until it goes live what it will be and, and what the kind of, um, what, what its own life form will, will take on. Yeah. Um, and luckily my intentions and what it has become have, have become aligned. Um, and the biggest thing really is to create a safe and supportive space for people. Um, I think right now, I mean, well, always, and especially right now in 2020, we all have so many roles and so many, um, labels and so many things that we are doing so many responsibilities we often don't have places where we can go and we can just put that down for a minute and we can just walk in somewhere and feel safe enough to remove all the facades and all the personalities and all the people that we have to show up and be and just allow ourselves to be taken care of and supported. Because for me, if we don't feel safe and we don't feel supported, yeah, sure, we can still create incredible things from um, not having that foundation. But when we have that, like what we are able to actually offer the world and how sustainable that can be is, it's everything. If we don't have safety and we don't have support, like yeah. there is no flaw. There is no flaw to literally have beneath you and be able to catapult yourself out into the world. So mm. for me, that's one of the most transformational things that we offer um, in terms of all of the things that we do there. And we do so many different things, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Yeah. Um, but that's one of like the main things that I offer. And I think just just transforms everyone who walks through the door of which we have so many different people who come and share space with us. Yeah. Um, and secondly, I always felt like, and especially in the age of social media, but even before that, I always felt like everything exciting and everyone inspiration, inspirational was always never where I lived. You know, <laughs> it was always like, oh, when I go to that event or when I go into the city, 
or when I like go on Instagram, that's where I'm going to find all of the people that are doing great things, but they're not where I live. Where I live is boring and where I live, nothing much is going on. And yet what I've learned over many years of, you know, just being a human and traveling around the world is that if we actually have the opportunity to connect with people where we live, you'll realize that there are incredible people. You just haven't spoken to them yet. And that often you're sat next to them on the bus or you're in the cafe or you're doing a workout next to them. So I really wanted to create this kind of excuse, if you will, this opportunity for us to actually see that amazing people are where we live. Like there's people living incredible lives and they're here. You don't have to turn on your phone. You don't have to go, like you can if you want to, but it's already here. So to really just remind people of the brilliance that they are surrounded by, that they often just forget because they're too busy on their laptops. Yeah. So that was a huge, um, yeah, intention of mine. And I'd say that the last thing on that is um, we spend so much time in our heads Um, we're very mind focused and very logical. And I feel like that in the last, you know, however many decades has been so um, amplified and like we need to be able to work things out and be logical and make plans. And for me, the way that I think about this is we've kind of been living from here up. Yeah. And we also need to remember to live from here down and come back to embodied leadership and in what, like whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're a leader or you're a mom or you're just someone who does whatever job, just to reunite people with the wisdom in their bodies. Because when we actually have a connection from here down, we are able to show up in whatever role we are showing up in, like a thousand times more amplified. So through the practice of yoga and the way that we offer it, um, really is to reunite people with living from here down to, and to show them that it's not some woo woo extraterrestrial, like spiritual thing, but this body is full of innate wisdom. And if you're not tapping into it, then you're really missing out on being like an even more powerful version of who you are. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much in that, so much in that. <laughs> there's a few things. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, um, and you know, you, you've remarked this this place of safety. Like, I want to start with that. So you talked about having a place of safety where people can turn up and be who they just are. You know, I I was I was talking to my um, husband at dinner tonight about this whole thing, and my girlfriend Magdalene had been talking to me that we all have this we have this center of who we really are. It's our foundation of who we really are. Now, our jobs and our friends and our environment, they pull us and push us to be different versions of that. But we all have this Mm -hmm. one, you know, who we really are at all times. And Mm -hmm. if we have the safety and if we have a place to go back to that where we can just say piss off ego, like Jesus, I've had enough of that. I'm sick of turn, having to turn up in whatever form everyone else seems to require of me that I can just be me and I've got a place where I can do that and people will embrace me. They will still think I'm okay. They're not going to disregard me. Oh, what gold. Absolutely. Oh. Like you are okay to just be you. Yeah. Yeah you're okay. Like how amazing is it to just go anywhere and you turn up, you know, you know, you're a hot mess one day or you're feeling pretty sassy the next day, like whatever the thing is. And for someone to just see you, like for someone to see you and be like, you're all right. Like you're okay. You know, like that's just however you are and wherever you are right now, you're okay. You're safe to be who you are. Yeah. Helen was, I mean, I know you've you've gone through your own kind of transformations yourself, like from where you are now to where you were five years ago, 10 years ago, you know, 20 years ago. But do you think there was a defining moment that led you to where you are right now? Uh, uh, and before you answer, I had this amazing guy on the show 
a couple of months ago, Michael Dixon. And if anybody would like to see previous shows of this, you just go to HeidiDenning.com to the Wine and Wisdom in the tabs there. And he, he talked about the magical dance of choice and chance. Ooh. So your life is choices and it's chances. And how, like, you know, what is that? Like, because there are these opportunities that come to us left, right and centre and we, it's, you know, that whole self-leadership piece actually about whether we, we take them and we grab them and we keep moving forward. But there's also these chance moments, right? You know, those sliding door moments that <laughs> happen. So can you share with us? I mean, was there one of those or has it been just a slow evolving into who you are and what you're doing now? Um, I don't know if we have an episode long enough to cover all of those moments. <laughs> right, okay. The One day, <laughs> like you, my idol, I will write a book. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> until then, um, yeah. I'd say kind of relevant to where I am now um, in the last, like, say, five years. Yeah. If we went back that far, um, I'd say a pretty defining moment, as you know, was my um, partner who, um, I'll set the scene for you. I had just opened up the collaborative, which is the studio's name. And we were about three weeks in. And like everyone who starts a project, especially when you're taking on like a commercial space, and you're doing this very like big live thing. Um, it's grown all up. done. Grown up thing. It's a grown, grown up, up thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not someone who plans or like I'm not a planner. I'm not someone that waits until like I've got X amount of money in the bank. Like that's just not that's just not my jam. If I've got an urge, I honor my urge and I just go with it. Um, and so when the studio kind of came into its carnation, which was also by like exactly what you're saying, by these chances and choices that I could have taken or could not have taken and, and decided to run with it. And um, we opened the studio on a bit of a wing and a prayer. And <laughs> Neil being the like stable in the job person. So, you know, you do that conversation of, look, if this all goes wrong, <laughs> are you going to pay my lease for the year? <laughs> You have to work bloody hard. Keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> because you're the one that we're riding on if I have really followed the wrong urge. Okay? Yeah. So just, are we cool? Great. We've got our, like, foundation set. And um, we were three weeks into the studio opening and Neil rang me or texted me one morning and said, I, I'm feeling absolutely awful and I can't move. And I just thought that Neil was doing the classic man flu. Sorry for all men listening. I was like, oh, well, you can't move. Like, I'm sure he's fine. Like, he's probably just being over the top. And then he texts me and he was like, no, really, like, I can't move. I was like, okay. So I went up to the apartment and I happened to be with my friend who happened to be a nurse who was like, I'll just come up with you and let's just go and see how he is. And... We got to my apartment and Neil um, was basically switching off. He had something that we later found out was called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is when your immune system starts attacking your peripheral nervous system. And this can happen to anyone at any time. Neil didn't have any like precondition. Um, he was an incredibly healthy, like 33 year old. And from the moment that I kind of walked up to the apartment and saw him, you, I mean, I don't know if you've had this moment, but there is a really kind of like taste in your mouth when you're like, something's really wrong. Mm -hmm. And you never question it. It's more like a statement, isn't it? You know. I think if you have to ask the question, it's yeah. not the moment. The moment is like, oh, okay, something's really not okay. Yeah. And about 36 hours later, he was fully paralyzed on uh, in intensive care and he'd lost his vision. And no one really knew what Gillian Barr was at that point. The hospital had treated it, but they were like, look, we don't know how long he's going to be down for. We might have to intubate him. We have no idea what recovery is going to look like. He could be like this forever. He, like, he, he can really go anywhere from this back to recovered, but we have no idea. So 
Um, that was, you know, less than fabulous timing for a start. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> like, yeah. we are in Bloody the deepest of shit. Seriously. I can love it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. We both can. We know, know the yeah. outcome, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so for. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, I, for those listening, I was there, I watched Helen go through this experience. So, you know, I know that, you know, and, and being, you know, it was interesting, Helen, and I've, we've not talked about this. I've never expressed this to you, but knowing that, you know, because I, I had opened a personal training business at one stage, you know, same, same, but different, knowing like what you put into that opening mm -hmm. moment and what, mm -hmm. like what requires of you emotionally, let alone physically, financially, all of that, but emotionally what it requires of you in those first few months. Mm. And when you can, like, when you have to, when you're in the situation that you were in, like with a, am I going to lose my partner? Mm. I, I mean, how you're even still operating and being the success you have still blows my mind from <laughs> those beginnings. But, I mean, that says a lot mm -hmm. for, about you, but... Sorry, I've interrupted. So please, no, please not let at all. Know. Every, what happened next? So we had about a week where we thought Neil was going to pass away, mm. and um, I remember, I, I remember actually thinking, "Oh shit! I wonder if I can get out of my lease." Yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon if I write to them and say, "Look, I'm really sorry, my partner's unwell." <laughs> <laughs> Will they let me out of the lease? Yeah, yeah. You know, all these like funny things that you think about when you're, you know, partially traumatized. Um, uh, fully and, traumatized, let's just yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, fully traumatized, fully traumatized. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and important to say that I remember thinking, okay, what am I going to do with the studio? I had, to, had someone cover. And as you know from running a personal training business, it's such a live business. You can't put an out of office on. No, you can't not turn up and no. the beat you've got no money so you can't even pay yeah, anyone no, no, <laughs> like you're just like you're just at every angle you're like yeah. shit shit yeah yeah so i remember thinking do you know what i'm gonna go and teach because i can't just sit thinking about whether neil's gonna pass away like i have to go and do something because i just can't do this and I decided to go back and teach and I'll, I'll circle back in a moment, but I think this is really important. And I remember going in and teaching that first class and my dad was in that class because my dad had flown over from England at the time to be with me. And I remember him sat there like at the front, just as like a show of like, you know, I've got you, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I rem remember thinking, I'm either gonna say nothing or I'm gonna have to tell everyone everything. Like I, you know, like I don't, and I don't know what's going to happen until I sit down and start talking. And when like everyone's in front of me and the studio is quite a small space and it was absolutely packed. Like, honestly, there's someone sat like this close to me in front of me. And I remember just sharing what was happening and I just told them and I was like, look, I'm, I'm not coming from this conclusive space, but this has transpired over the last week. And right now, I don't know whether he is going to live or pass away. Um, but what I do know is, as someone who practices yoga or just has a spiritual practice, is that this is what we practice for. Like, there's a, there's a quote by Rolf Gates, and it says, you practice in the light what you wish to remember in the dark. Oh my God. And that to me, I know, and that to me was like, you know, yoga sounds all fancy and it's all, you know, tree poses at sunrise and doing all these beautiful matcha lattes. But in reality, what it is, is creating a practice when you're feeling really great for the moments where shit hits the fan and you really need something to sustain you. Yeah. And it, it never dawned on me at the time, because evidently I wasn't thinking about it, that that could have been the worst thing for my business ever. <laughs> <laughs> it was so honest and I don't know what I would have done yeah, that in front yeah. of someone like that whether I just yeah. would have been like do I go back yeah. what if I go back and then share partners you know like what do I do sure. and thankfully I had no room to entertain that all I had was honesty which was so amazing because when you don't have any of this mind chatter you actually just get to be this beautiful channel of truth 
because there is nothing to conflict you or say you're being an idiot, you shouldn't say that, or that's not a good idea, you're just so clear. And that really is what built the foundation of our studio and really is what built the very thing that Neil and I needed, not at that point, but when he started to recover. So he had a week where he, um, we thought he was gonna pass away and they wanted to intubate him. And my sister's an ICU nurse. And she said to me at the time, she was like, look, don't let them in intubate him early because people don't realize sometimes intubation can come with its own issues. So I just want you to like promise me that you that they wait until the very last minute to intubate him. And I was just, I didn't, didn't have any idea what she was even talking about. I was just like taking orders. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever, sure. I'll go and tell the doctor that he can't do his job. Like sure, no problems. Um, <laughs> and thank God I did because I really wanted to intubate him. And Neil's lung capacity, he went down to something like 5% and they were like, look, we're going to have to debate him. And I was like, just give him one more day because you don't know Neil. Yeah. So you don't, you don't actually know what's going to happen. And right now you're telling me that Neil shouldn't be even in this position. So if anything is possible, anything is possible, <laughs> you know, like let's just yeah. flip it because anything can happen. And lo yeah. and behold, Neil's lung capacity went up about 5%. And they were like, it's not good enough. He needs to be intubated. And I remember thinking, well, one way is death. One way is life. And it's creeping up to the life marker. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think we're just going to hang on in there and see like how he gets on. And yeah. um, he ended up walking him, himself out of the hospital 21 days after he was taken in, um, which was just like the most like remarkable recovery I've like just show of strength that he had yeah. and that we had together at that time yeah, of course um so that was a really defining like it, it's been four years coming up to four years since then and the learnings have just been like every year has held something different I yeah. think in the beginning when I basically had to care for him he couldn't do anything he was yeah so tiny he had the weight on him or you remember he was literally looked like a tiny child he just was so like thin and he had a paralyzed face he couldn't walk anywhere he couldn't do anything go to the bathroom by himself so I was like single-handedly running the studio and then also I felt like I'd gone home with a newborn baby I remember thinking this is must be what mums feel like <laughs> Yeah, because now suddenly I'm responsible for this person and they can't yeah. take care of themselves and now I've got to take care of them. Um, and so, yeah, like in opening the studio at the time, I'm thinking, God, this is such bad timing. And actually, we unknowingly built the very thing that we both needed to sustain us over the last four years. Um, so that yeah. was, yeah, a really defining moment in what it's taught me about myself in what it's taught me in the power of community the mm. power of being an embodied leader mm. uh, and you know I don't know whether that had or hadn't have happened to me whether I would really have gone into that feeling like I had to be the person that knew yeah. I've opened a studio so I must know everything you know like you, you feel this expectation you think sure. this is what's expected of you but because I couldn't do that I feel like I was going through my own like <sighs> transformational process but I was doing it with everybody watching me mm. and I was also doing it with them yeah does this make sense it was it was yeah. such like an inclusive process and I think that really taught me what I now understand to be embodied leadership and that mm. it's way more powerful when we we can still lead and lead alongside people rather than this kind of more older dynamic of it needing to be a top-down approach um, and yeah, that that was one of the massive learnings that I had. There's so many there. Oh, there's so many, and yeah, and um, <laughs> if anyone actually who um, is listening, <coughs> Jade, who would perhaps like to put a link <laughs> in um, the comments of Gillian Barre, just so people could understand a little bit more about it and perhaps how they might care to support it. That would be amazing. Uh, thank you. Jade um, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to just track back on that though Helen because 
you know, uh, you know, talking about those sliding door moments, you know, it, like we, we all know the movie. It was just like an amazing movie. And I refer to it a lot of those sliding door movements, moments, of course, where, and that, of course, was for you because when you think about how perhaps you would have turned up to your business, how perhaps you would have been a, the leader that, in your business, how perhaps you would have uh, decided to do certain events even, like every decision that has happened since that sliding door moment, uh, you know, could be completely different to what it is now because of that moment. And, you know, this is the thing with adversity, right? Like we do not know and we cannot predict the curveballs or the cannonballs that are going to be shot at mm -hmm. us at different times of our life. We cannot prepare for them. And if we, we, if we sit and try, if we spend time, whether minutes, days, months, years, trying to prepare for the shit that might come, Far out. You be exhausted. Are, yeah, you're exhausted. <laughs> you're missing out on life. You're yeah. you are tapping the joy out of what is possible for your life. So, like, don't bother with that. I say. I mean, I you know, forget it. Don't try to prepare for it. No. Forget it because we can't predict it. We can't predict it right. So, you know, going back to even our title for tonight about self care and self expression and self leadership. Like what we do today without caring about what might happen in the future because we don't know and they could be little things and they could be monstrous things. We don't know. But all we can do is live in today and mm -hmm. try to do what's right for us right now. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, from reading your emails from bottom to top to bottom, I, I mean, I know that's what you... <laughs> are trying to give to the world that, like, mm. just, what can we do to live in today? Mm. And, you know, 2020 for many people has been the greatest adversity of their life, without doubt. Yes, 100%. We've all experienced it very differently, without doubt. Um, mm. But I suppose from your perspective, your unique um, lens on the world, which I know you have, which is so beautiful. This embodiment leadership. What do you What do you think we can extract from it, Helen? Without you know, we don't. None of us care for to talk about politics here or anything like that. But what are the things that we can extract from 2020 that will set us up for some new version of fabulousness going forward? I feel like the first thing is exactly what you've said is that I feel, you know, 2020 is called bullshit on a lot of things. <laughs> Excuse my French. And I mean that by we were all hiding under our veneer of busyness and distraction. And then suddenly we couldn't be busy and distracted so much anymore. So we really got to see what was underneath our busyness and distraction and sit with that, which I think has been so like confronting and difficult and all of those mm. things, but such an amazing insight to really see, really see where you actually are with the world. So I feel like it's given us this incredible, unique opportunity to understand ourselves on such a um, more truthful level than perhaps we kind of had before. But I guess what I'm taking away from it is um kind of what i said earlier that anything is possible if you'd have said that we were going to be doing this a year ago we would have all been like you're crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would never happen you know even when i i look at friends who have who have you know not not made massive changes and leaps toward life they want to live because their job is really secure or because they could never do that and yet this year has shown us that nothing is really anything anything can be changed at any point and at any time and that whilst you can look at that in like oh my god anything can happen and anything can change I always think just change the diet change the tonality anything can happen <laughs> and anything can change 
yes yeah. anything can happen like so yeah. often the the kind of caves that we're living in and the barriers that we've surrounded ourselves are in even though i know they feel so real aren't they're mm. things that we've built or we've created or society has put on us so i feel like one of my biggest learnings is just to keep just to keep checking in with myself and to keep asking myself like hang on am i trapping myself here or actually has this year taught me that anything is possible and I can actually make anything a way out of no way. Yeah. So I feel like that, yeah, that's definitely been, been one of my like biggest learnings from this year. So Helen, I mean, when New South Wales, Sydney went into its lockdown earlier in the year, I mean, your yoga studio had to close, your events pr program had to be canceled all of that was deleted, really. Mm. Mm. What did you do? What did you do um, business-wise to keep afloat, to keep some cash flow, to keep your staff? Mm. Because, of course, when you've got staff, you, you know, that's this other pressure of, shit, I've got to find a way because I know they've got to pay rent, they've got to pay mortgages, they've got a life. I need to somehow find a way so I can actually support them, which is, you know, in 2020, I think all, all leaders, no matter what, have really struggled with that part because if it's just about, all right, I can perhaps manage in myself for whatever reason, but when you've got people who are relying on you to adapt and extract something different and, 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 and operate in a new way, whew, that's a full-on responsibility. So... What have you done to be able to cope with that? First of all, that is my jam. Right. Cool. <laughs> that is like, that's a big turn on for me. I'm like, oh, oh, so everyone's expecting me to, not expecting me, but the general, you know, uh, conversation around this is that everything's going to go wrong and that, you know, we're all going to collapse. And I'm like, oh, right, challenge, is it? Okay. Okay, I got it. I got it. My dad once told me like when I was younger, my dad had many different businesses. Like you're not paid for when things are going well. You're paid for when shit hits the fan. Like that is when you're, <laughs> that's yeah. when you really get to see who you are. So I remember hearing that. And yeah. ever since when something comes up, even if it's small um, or like that massive, I'm like, okay, like this is, this is what I'm being trained for, you know, like tr rather yeah. than trying to get through it or panic, how can I really, um, yeah, take it as the challenge that it is. So I think first off, I paid no attention to what anyone else was doing. I don't care like what anyone else in my industry or anyone that could seemingly be compared to what I do, because I think that's the first thing that takes you out of your own intuition and your own gut instincts. And especially with social media and that feeling of like, especially, you know, when the rug's being pulled, we want to look to people because we want that kind of, are we okay? Are we doing the right thing? And whilst yeah. I really get that before, I think before we ever do that, we just need to be with ourselves. And what would I, what, what do I really feel like the right thing to do is next? And it might not be the right thing when I get there, <laughs> but what's the thing right now that I know to be like, the best move. So that's the first thing. I just switched everything off and was like, okay, what do I feel like I need to do? And secondly, just keeping everything so simple. So the one, the glimpses that I had of everyone in my industry just felt like absolute chaos and everything just felt so complex and so hard. And I don't believe that things are complex or hard. I think if, we, if, if that's where we are, we're not seeing the most obvious, simple thing that's right in front of us that mm. could probably just make our lives way easier. And even though we might not stay with that thing, we can do the most simple thing to buy us time until we figure out what the bloody hell we're gonna do. Yeah. So for me, um, I did both of those things. I literally just took my whole studio online yeah. I made sure that all of my communication with all of, so the studios run on membership. So we have a, like a, um, yeah, a big regular following of people that are really invested in what we do um, and was really honest with them. Like, I think there's two, two ways of showing up. And the first thing is to lead 
and people want leadership during these times. They don't want you to lie to them. They don't want you to tell them, you know, tell them what to do, but they want to know that you're there. And I think the first thing I did was just send an email out and say to everybody, like, I'm right here with you. And this is really shit and hard. And I don't know what's going to happen. But what I do know is that I'm not going anywhere. And I know you're not going anywhere. And together, we will figure this out. So just know that firstly, there's that. And secondly, really honest with people. We're a small business, and I'm frightened. And right now, the thing that sustains me and all of my staff and our community at large is at risk and so you know this is a really scary time and if you can still be here and you can still support us I would love you to do that and if something's happening in your world then just talk to me communicate with me and let's just see how we can get through this together um so that was something that I feel like you know, part of me, like my ego wanted to be like, don't tell them that you're frightened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what leaders do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell them that I you are you. fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That> everything is <laughs> great. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and yet when I really actually drop in, I'm like, no, like, because we all feel like that in our own way. And that's okay. Mm. It's okay to it feel is. like that. We can still be strong and powerful and really bloody vulnerable at the same time. And people respect yeah. and receive that so much more than just, do whom it may concern. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. like it's just, it's a whole different energy in it. Um, so really honest with people, close the studio, put everything online, um, kept all of my teachers on, kept paying all of my teachers found different ways to uh, maximize our online presence in terms of live classes, pre-recorded classes. Um, (laughs) We planned retreats way back when for when we thought that we were going to be reopening, which was a little bit ballsy, to be honest. Um, But we did it. And this was how we just sustained ourselves the whole time. And we didn't lose one staff member. Everyone still got paid. You know, our membership retention was of like, I think 80% of what we were when we were open, which was just amazing. And I don't think that any of that was by fluke or by accident. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, you know, the way that everyone came together and just, you just adapt and people don't care if it's messy. No. Well, just just really don't care. Just like Tiffany's just said there, the truth will set you free. People, uh, we are so sick of leaders crapping on and telling us untruths and bullshitting yes we just want truth Truth. and so thank you tiffany for saying that because that's all we want because none of us you know there's so many fake news things and clickbait and all of this i mean how beautiful it is to be involved with people who will just say i don't know what i'm doing right now but i'm making the best decisions for the information I've got today, which could be completely wrong next week. And I will have to change them. But right now, this this is what we're doing. This is all I can do. Because you know what? Perfection is a fairy tale. Yep. Uh, We cannot try to be perfect, especially when there's so much uncertainty. It's absolutely impossible. And I would imagine, Helen, like going back to that time when you opened the studio and Neil was on life life support and you had to make the decision whether to be either that stoic leader who is like, I'm going to be fine, look at me, I'm dealing with it all and, you know, you can all turn up and I'll be here for you or you say like, oh, my God, this is like the most traumatic, adverse thing that could possibly be happening to me right now. But I'm just going to try and show up every day and be here for you because that is all the control I have on everything that is so uncontrollable. A hundred percent. And exactly like you're saying, like the truth piece is just... Oh, just yeah the truth has a certain energy to it it has a certain taste to it and if you mm. can find it within you to be okay with your own truth in that moment like to me that's the most powerful leadership you can offer yeah ever yeah. Helen uh 
2020 has rattled so many people. People, I mean, Beyond Blue tells us that there is a 30% increase with people contacting them about anxiety, double the amount of people contacting them about depression. Mm. What what are your what do you say is your one, two, three things, self-care things that we can all try to put in place right now to help us just calm the anxiety, calm that uncertainty that we can't control so we can just try to ride this through. Turn off your phone <laughs> and turn off the Apart news. Apart from if you're listening to wine and wisdom. Apart on from your this, phone. yes. Or when you're practicing <laughs> yoga, you keep that on there. Yeah, 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 those two. <laughs> yeah, those two, but, yeah. But really, that. like, turn off the television for a while. Turn off yeah. your phone for a while. Like, I know everyone's like, oh, that's not possible. I need to stay up to date. Yeah, but what about... Okay, yeah, part of that is true, but we're not in the age where if something happens, we're not going to know. <laughs> we yeah. will always know. Someone will always come and tell you when something important's about to happen. It's like yeah. almost one of the annoying things about life right now is that you never don't know. You know everything all of the time. All of the time. All of the like... time. So I just think like turn everything off for an hour, for a day and get outside like your nervous system, your nervous system doesn't know that you're not being chased by a bear when you're watching something stressful on the news. Like you are sending, well, you, we, us, are sending ourselves into such disarray 24 seven with our technology and our bodies just can't cope with that. They weren't designed to be in that state. And whilst we can come up with all of these fancy practices and all of these things to do, and that's great, really what I do is turn off my phone, turn off the television, go and put my feet in the sand, go and look at some trees, go and look at the ocean, go and sit with my friend and just have a hilarious conversation about anything. Um, yeah. Laugh, like I know so many people, myself included before, feel such um, guilt about laughter or even saying that you've derived anything good at this time because so many people are in hell. Yeah. They're having a fucking yeah. awful time. Excuse my French. Yeah. And I, uh, I totally, I hear you, but we must reclaim our joy. We must because we are no good to anybody worrying, stressed, tired, knackered with nothing left to give. So even just sitting down with your friend, talking rubbish, you know, looking at cat videos on YouTube or talking about that thing you did those years ago, then I know in Ibiza or wherever you've been, whatever. <laughs> like, just not me, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just like to come back to laughter and come back to nature. Like those yeah. two things, we all have that. Even if you've got a tiny bit of grass outside of your apartment, even if you've got a phone and you call up your mate, like everyone's got this access, whatever your current like reality is. And that mm. to me, then when I do have to go back and face life and its challenges, my nervous system can actually handle it. Like mm. my nervous system is like, thanks, you just gave me a really nice break and I'm ready yeah. to receive whatever else I've got to do for you. But if we never give ourselves that opportunity to unplug, yeah, bad things yeah. happen. Bad things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think you've you've just answered the next question I was going to ask you about, you know, I, I talk about your resilience bucket. You know, you if you think of your resilience like a bucket and when life's good, that bucket feels strong and sturdy and you're on fire. But when times get a little wobbly, like like now, um, little rusty holes start forming in that bucket. And as we know. Little rusty holes become bigger holes and, and all our strengths and capabilities start flowing out. So my question was going to be, which I think you've really answered, is what do you do to keep your resilience bucket strong and sturdy despite the challenges and the uncertainty and the cannonballs and the curveballs that get thrown your way? I mean, you're, you've, you've mentioned joy and nature. 
Mm. I mean, are they your they, they, they your go to two things? Um, they are my go tos. The two other things that I would add is rest, yeah, sleep. Yeah. Again, like we want to make everything so complicated with superfood smoothies and like eight <laughs> supplements and actually just go to bloody bed. <laughs> yeah, go yeah, to yeah. bed and get some sleep and some rest or even just being on your sofa without doing anything, without looking at your phone, without just quickly checking the television, like to actually just rest and do nothing. And again, turn yourself into that more like parasympathetic state of your nervous system that rest and digest is something that I practice every single day like I mm. actually cannot not do it otherwise I just feel like I'm a nutter um and this might sound like a a strange one to add but for me also staying resilient and kind of filling up that resilience bucket like you so beautifully call it is is also just to come back to the fact that people are really good and there are good people everywhere. And when I'm struggling, when I'm struggling with 2020, when I'm struggling with my mental health, when I'm struggling with anything and all of those, you know, we all have that kind of inner witch in our minds that likes to tell us all of these awful things. I just like to remember that there are people like me feeling how I feel that I'm not on my own ever. I'm never on my own in how I feel. Everyone feels the way that we all feel and it might come dressed in different clothes, but at the root of it, we all feel the same. And if I'm feeling lonely or especially now with all of the news on with this kind of very much like, you know, be frightened of people and people aren't good and <gasps> like, there are great people everywhere. There are great people where you live. People are kind, people are good and they're probably in your neighborhood. And that, honestly, even though that might sound unrelated to rest and nature, genuinely really fills me back up in my, like, relationship to other humans. That makes me feel so connected. Well, it is that whole connection piece, isn't it? Like, you know, we know now how, I think more than ever this year, people have realised that connecting to good, kind, calm wonderful gorgeousness people uh, from who live from their heart uh, far out like this is all we need in this well you know we need other things of course we that's do pollyanna. that's pollyanna but we that we need to have them around us yeah and we need to seek them yeah and we need to we need to extract the others who do not fit into that mold because it's not worth it having those others sapping you of life and energy and joy and all of that just keep those good connections and make it your priority make mm. it a priority building community and, and being with good people is uncomfortable everyone has the first or 10 first awkward conversations <laughs> and yeah, you feel yeah. like an idiot and you feel like no one yeah. likes you and what are you doing I don't know what I'm doing here. god this is awkward can't believe I came and yet yeah. actually like you have to go through that process everyone does even the people that are now the bestest of ever friends like yeah. put yourself out there in whatever capacity to build those relationships because yeah. when you are surrounded by whether it's in your your greater community or your inner circle by good people it restores your faith in everything and if you can restore your faith when you're feeling terrible or things aren't going your way like that's yeah. what we turn to we turn to our beliefs we turn to our faith you know and I think that's so important Helen I have one last question for you tonight I know we've gone over time as I always seem to do so <laughs> with that um, but it's such an interesting conversation I could talk for hours but my last question uh, to you is, out of all the pearls of wisdom that have been handed down to you over the years, what, what has been the most impactful to you? And what has that piece of wisdom that someone has given to you that you've been able to apply to your life and it's had a positive impact, what is that? Um, yeah, I thought about this one long and hard. And again, as with everything I've said, it's really simple, but really profound. Um, on the first night that 
Neil went into hospital, I rang my dad and my dad was in London and I'm in Australia. And it must have been about 3 a.m. I think this time. And it was one of those phone calls where you're in absolute, like I'd fallen to sleep and then woken up and remembered what was going on. And it was one of those like screaming, crying, what am I gonna do? Like dad, I, I don't know what to do. Like, just help me. And I remember like just that crying and just feeling like someone give me something because I actually just don't, I don't even know what to do with myself right now. And I remember my dad saying to me, like, I can't tell you that he's gonna be okay, but I can tell you that you will be, like you will be okay. And I know right now it's really shit and it might get even worse. He's like, but you don't even know yet who you really are in there and you will be okay. Like you will find within you what you don't even know that you have yet and you will get through this. Regardless of what the outcome is, trust yourself. Trust yourself to know what to do next Trust yourself that even if it feels like it's falling apart for longer than you would like, that you will be okay because you have more in you than you will ever even realize or know until you need to know it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah. that, I just remember, like, I've probably heard you will always be all right, like a thousand times, but I remember just being like, oh my God. <laughs> he's absolutely right like yeah. I know me I can rely on me you know like I, I I I can do this like I can actually yeah and 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 I feel like again in those moments when we're having such down moments it's so easy to say oh everything's going to be okay and actually it's a lie we don't know <laughs> so again rather than him lying to me and telling me that yeah. everything's going to be fine yeah. or don't worry about oh, it no so yeah. annoying just the truth the truth yeah. right now is i don't know but yeah. i do know you yeah and i know that you will always be okay so just mm. remember that and that to me like when i'm really just feeling whatever the feels are is just to be like do you know what i'm always gonna be okay like yeah. i will find something in me even if it's in the 11th hour <laughs> and i'll get through it yeah, yeah, which you did. Which I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was quite a long hour, actually. <laughs> and a big, uh, a big call out and thank you to Dad, amazing legend for big up being Dad. there. Yeah, thank you, Dad. My gosh, yeah. And so, Helen, right now, uh, you, I mean, you've you've had retreats in Australia and overseas. Uh, the borders are closed, obviously, so we, we we don't have any of those in the diary. But when is your next one? going on here on our land that we could perhaps have a look at yeah so i have one more retreat um with one space left in um november it's a three night retreat down in berry beautiful um on the south coast yeah so um anyone who is interested in just basically i call yoga retreats well my yoga retreats it's like adult babysitting which sounds probably really weird. But what I mean by that is you ba basically just get to come along and take off all of your responsibilities, hand them over to me <laughs> for the whole three nights and four days. And again, like I was saying earlier, take off all of your hats, take off all of the labels and the roles. And for three nights and four days, you literally just get to be taken care of and fed, sleep in, practice yoga, roll around in the grass, have a glass of wine, like whatever it is. Like these retreats are like a kind of like a, yeah, a bubble in which you can do that. Beautiful. Yeah. And for those who don't live in Maroubra or in the, in the surrounds, uh, you do have online programs that they can tap into, right? Yeah, I have um, an online yoga collection which is like a series of pre-recorded classes. Um, and our studio is an ocean view. So it's so beautiful because it was actually filmed. It's very bougie. Our online collection was filmed by part of the crew who filmed Spider-Man. Whoa. I'm a big yeah. dog. 
You are fancy <laughs> pants. Oh, my God. So, well, I say that because it's so beautiful. You literally yeah. feel like you are walking into the studio and you're just watching the ocean. Mm. Um, so you can, yeah, you can practice with us online and you can also practice with us live. We live stream classes from our studio. Um, yeah. Onto the internet anywhere in the world. And I'm going to put all those links um, after we finish up. So if anyone would like to click <laughs> on and have a little look around, um, please make sure you do. And as I said, if you don't do that, and if you don't do the retreat, just get on the email list um, so you can have this beautiful wisdom that Helen has. Oh my gosh, it's just divine. So Helen, we're at the end, like way over the end, actually. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that, that happens sometimes. Things don't go to plan. It's all about self-expression, right? We can Indeed. do it whatever way we need to do it for us. So. 100%. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing a wine with me and everybody who's watching either now or in the future. You've got a smidge left. I'm at the end. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, truly appreciate your amazingness at all times. But uh, for you sharing it tonight and, you know, telling your, bravely telling, telling your story, uh, you, you are a woman with courage who I truly admire and I just think, you know, if we can just make more of you in this universe, it'll be such a better I don't universe. know if the universe can handle any more Helens. Well, that could be a good point, actually. <laughs> There'd be too much chaos. <laughs> there might be, a, yeah, there might be. But anyway, thank you for you. Um, thank you to everybody who's been listening uh, tonight. And if you're watching later on, which I know most of you will, um, that will... You know, any questions that you have, please pop them in the comments. Helen and I will come back and we're, we're more than happy to answer anything you've got. But for tonight, we say goodbye. Um, you enjoy your last bit of wine. I shall. The wisdom that you've learned and we'll see you again in a fortnight. Thank you so much. Good night.